Okay, so the, the, the Bishopdale Centre, um, a relatively compact centre focused around the Bishopdale Mall and with the park next door. Um, relatively consistent street network around the centre which, which gave the accessibility criteria um, a, a, a quite circular shape around the centre itself. Um, so again, a, a driver here, as with many of the other centres, is um, a supply issue, um, simply proposing to, to look at all of that area for, for medium density would perhaps put too much supply into that particular area. So we have focused on those blocks which have the best accessibility to the centre itself, which are the ones adjoining the centre and also the ones that are to the um, south of the, uh, the main road there, I think it's Harewood Road. Um, and that is, those are the areas which are marked in yellow on the map. And done the sort of the broad sweep and then listen to what's happened and then cut back to the slightly more finessed uh, It hasn't just been on the basis of um, community yep, comment. No, no. That yep. has been one factor, but there are other environmental factors that have been considered too. Yeah, was there much community comment on this? I'm, I'm fascinated with this intensification. This is, there's a bit of social housing around here. And, uh, I believe the comments are quite mixed, but Scott may yeah. care to elaborate on that. Just find the comments, please. And if you could tell it, find the comments page. Uh, yeah, a, relative, a relatively low number compared to other areas. Um, 13 in response. Um, yeah, of, uh, of some of those, um, one or two were, um, were very strongly opposed. But um, on, on the whole, um, the, the use, there were the usual, um, shall we say, um, rationales for the, for the, for the um, opposition and those were traffic and parking concerns. But I would think that of all the areas that we looked at um, around the city and these key activity centres that um, Bishopdale would have the least in the way of um, traffic and parking, you know, and uh, of any traffic and parking um, concerns. Yeah, I just just find that phrase, you know, nothing personal, but mm. usual rationales, it kind of... Well, it, it sort of minimise we, it a bit. Uh, I mean, uh, if we look at the Rickerton people who came in yeah. this morning, do we call yeah. that usual... Well, yeah, shall we say, a, a, a category of concern that is quite common to all of these areas. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Certainly not trying to downplay any of no, the no, submissions. No, no. It's just that there is a, a common thread that goes through all of the opponents, and one of them mm. is, is traffic and parking. Mm. All right. Can I just ask, um, basically, why you took out the part sort of on the north and west side of Harewood Road to, and, le and left the other part in, like, in, in terms of the um, medium density. Well, um. So, again, again it's, it, we, we start with a large area and we have to um, reduce it down to match the, what, we, what we consider maybe pro an appropriate supply in the area. Uh, and we looked at the areas which were most accessible, um, and those were the ones adjacent to the adjacent to the mall. Um, Harewood Road itself presents something of a, uh, a barrier to, to walking and, and cycling access. Um, so, in the, on, on balance, um, we decided to focus more on the areas to the south of Harewood Road than the areas to the north. And so, it's, it's comparing one against the other, um, and, and on balance, the ones to the south are, are more appropriate. So, so, and I'm not sorry. I was away earlier this, um, this morning, but um, it seems that you haven't, because it's not a map of Barrington, there's no change with the Barrington area from the original, from the earlier draft, or is there? No. Mm -hmm. no I'm leaping across the city about. No, yeah, I'm sorry. The, there, there are two areas that we haven't supplied maps for um, at all, and those are, are Barrington and Church Corner. Right. Because um, upon um, review of uh, the submissions and the available technical material and um, and um, general, so shall we say, technical review, we felt at these stages, at this stage, they shouldn't be um, rezoned at all. 
So we've just focused on those areas. So, so they won't yeah. be rezoned? No, they won't be rezoned. Where I was coming from, and, and it was a previous, um, it, was, it was like a previous decision, uh, draft, um, yeah, it's just, so we're comparing sort of intensification right across the city, and, and where I'm actually beginning from is that it seems to me this area here is a higher area, you'd have better drainage for intensification, but we're not, this is an area, but we've decided to, to um, reduce the, the area that is being intensified. Mm -hmm. Unfor yes, we did have a lot of discussion about this this morning, unfortunately. We're, we're, um, and they weren't decisions, they were simply draft maps um, to get feedback on. Um, we were required to look at intensification around KACs through the LERP in Chapter 6, so, so hence the first maps that went out. Subsequent to that, we've done more intensive research into each one of them. We've also done um, further investigation into numbers, plugging the numbers in, how much we're required to supply out to, I think it's 2028, is it? Um, in comparison to the existing operative plan, which um, pr provides out to um, 2041, I think it is. So, so we have had the discussion about the context, uh, the numbers that we have to supply, and where they should best locate. We've also determined that it's best to spread it, spread it around the centres rather than concentrate on one or two centres, and, and then we have a huge amount of... Um, medium density around one or two centres rather than spreading it out because medium density also provides an option for living types, you know, smaller units and walkable distance to various services and facilities. So it's best to actually spread that, that uh, housing choice out around different centres, not just concentrated in one or two areas. Thanks, Bridget, and I'm sorry I wasn't that's, here this morning. Right. Thank you for that. So, um, Church Corner and Barrington, no change is proposed and what went out in the very draft thing has been reverted to where it was pre that. Yeah. No, no medium density yes. areas yes. around That's those KACs. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yanni. Thank you. So there's no traffic constraints, there's no infrastructure constraints. This area is pretty low intensified at the moment. I would have thought this is like one of the best areas that you could intensify in, rather than putting intensification into existing areas that already have a high degree of intensification, if we take the kind of spreading it out across the city. So, like, I'm not convinced of the reasons why you wouldn't intensify in this area. Like, is there any other reason why? I mean, if it's just putting a new traffic light in or a pedestrian crossing, you know, it, the traffic here would be just as bad as anywhere near Limwood and yet you haven't removed Limwood, so. The yellow areas are to include medium, and dense, medium density intensification. It's just the hatch areas that this uh, map shows proposed to be deleted from that. But what, but why? For the reasons that John's just been through, that firstly, um, we don't want to oversupply in this particular area, and secondly, because of the accessibility. And we're talking walking or biking accessibility. If, sorry, That's if, why you have medium density if around KCs. If you just take, you know, you don't, you don't want a whole bunch in this area, but if you look at existing areas where you're proposing to intensify that already have a high degree of intensification, Merivale's one that mm. we've mm. cut back, Linwood's another, um, why wouldn't you want more intensification in this area? Like... Is there a magic number that you've got? No more than 500 houses per key activity centre? Or how, how, how are we taking an equitable approach to getting the activity centres intensified to a sufficient degree that means you know, it's sustainable, it's a good use of infrastructure? Because that, that's what I'm kind of having problems understanding. The, going, going back to the strategic... Um, objectives, um, which, which tell us to to look at key activity centres as a focus of intensification across the city. It's not sing, singling out any particular activity centre uh, over and above another. We, we, we've looked at all centres, and for various reasons, we've we've reduced the need, uh, the area of intensification in some, or, and some we've 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 not looked at to, to begin with. When we looked at the potential for intensification around each of these centres, it's based on an accessibility criteria, um, which would focus our study area around each centre. Um, there is not an intention um, to 
for any of the centres to, to include all of the area that was identified for study as, as medium density. If we did that, we would effectively create a medium, new medium density area, which would be not too far from what is currently zoned for medium density across the rest of the city. So it's, it's, there was obviously an oversupply there. So, but the over, by going in with, with effectively an oversupply, uh, gave, gave us those options on, on further analysis and we've taken on board what the community have told us to actually identify the areas most appropriate around each centre where intensification may happen. Mm. I would have thought that it's not actually a case of the area. We know we've got huge capacity at the moment with existing zoning. So actually a lot of it will come down to individual opportunity, probably within a wider area for intensification. So that would seem to say to me that actually it's better to have a wider area to enable that capacity to be increased. Because if you have a smaller area like we currently have, for whatever reason it's not happening. It, it happens in the poor areas. It happens, you know, like it happens in Limwood, happens in Phillipstown, happens in Charleston. Um, but, but in these areas, it doesn't, it hasn't happened to the degree that, I mean, this area hasn't even had intensification that, yet. And that is the point. Yeah. Some areas already are on the, they're in a transition already from low density. Over the last 10, 15 years, a lot of the areas around Rickerton um, that you've already seen established living three zones, they are already on the change. They're already intensifying. When you've got places like Bishop Dale, which are low density areas, they've got little pockets of sort of some high, some more medium density. You've got to acknowledge or recognise that the market is, or it's probably not ready for change as other areas are already are. So they're already happening. So a low density area such as Bishopdale, you've got to be careful that you don't zone it, over zone it in terms of a medium density because it's not, it's only just starting to change. It may go very fast and there may be a time to come back and look at it and say, well, this has been highly successful. It's, the, it's had a high take up. And um, you're right that all the infrastructure is, is in there. It has got a lot of benefits to it. But it's still an option to go wider. Mm -hmm. But at this point of time, we've weighed all the factors up and just think it's just starting to change. So it's let the market see how it picks up on it. Yeah. I, I think at some stage we'll have a wider conversation about what we're trying to do. Yeah, just um, looking at the map and looking at the way that area is at the moment, the area directly opposite from the mall, so on the other side of um, Harewood Road, and I appreciate what you were saying about the road being a natural barrier, although there is a, a median strip in that road that would already make pedestrian crossing easy. And I note that there's already been some redevelopment on that side of Harewood Road. Mm. Um, it looks as though, you know, traditional living one-type houses have been relatively recently demolished and there's been older person's housing put in there, over 60s units. Mm. So that would suggest that intensification is naturally occurring to the extent that it's, it's able to within that zone. That would suggest to me that that block directly opposite the um, Bishopdale Mall would in fact be a good contender um, to be made yellow because it's actually happening to, to the extent possible already. We, it, again, it was one of those areas that we almost went that way because it was starting to change. Mm. That's that little pocket that I talked about. But it hasn't, because of the numbers, exactly what John was explaining, we just stuck to the other side, just weighing up. But, I mean, it could, it could still warrant... If there's support for that, um, we're happy to consider adding a, a smaller area of that from across the road into the plan. Can I add um, I think um, it, that area you're talking about is actually very similar in nature to the area in Merivale that we excluded in this round, um, an area that already has uh, meets a certain medium density um, level. Hence, the net gain would have been very um, minimal. Little, minimal for us, which was the initial... Um, driver for this exercise. However, I think there is a, there is a discussion that you're probably going to have about um, perhaps it's not a bad thing to um, encourage it further in these areas where there's already uptake. So if you, if you go that way, then both Merivale, that section of Merivale and this area um, have the same properties 
Yes, so exactly as yes. the comment I made about Merivale, where yes, exactly. it's already happening organically, it would make sense to zone that area so that we can legitimise what obviously the market is telling us um, mm. is a, a natural progression for the area. Anyway, so I certainly would be in favour, just that block opposite the mall, um, of, um, of, of making that into a medium density zone. And if I can summarise just a couple of things in terms of oversupply, um, in terms of why not all the supply? So that's the question that we have asked ourselves. So, and we have two, two main answers to that as to why we don't oversupply. And one is that we can better target council's efforts if we have a more consolidated area. So if we're going to do street upgrades, street trees, then we can actually target that to where intensification can happen, um, as opposed to a, a large swathe of area where it, um, intensification may occur pepper potted Mm. Um, and the second reason, very related to the first one, is that in the pepper potted large area, one intensified development here, another one in a kilometre um, away, was that from the public and the th through the public consultations, that was their biggest fear, that um, they would get one here, one another mm -hmm. place without proper consolidation and working together. And it would, uh, um, the comment was that it, it would just, it wouldn't help us with numbers, it would just um, annoy the neighbours. <laughs> it becomes stark, the contrast. If, if you've got a whole street developing, and there's a lot of investment, investment drives investment, we know that. So when you concentrate the investment in an area, for example, Mirabel, that's exactly what's happened. It's been successful in that manner. Same with Rickerton. Um, similarly, if we just consolidate these areas a bit, then hopefully the, you know, the investment is the same thing. And the, the effects on the neighbours start to become you know, not as great when you've got a two, three-storey house next to a one story has more, has more impact than when you've got the same type of development beside down the street. So can I just ask, so um, you're, you're comfortable that we add in that area opposite the um, mall on the northern side of Harewood Road? Okay, thank you. So the last map is Linwood. actually sort of goes almost against everything you said when you're trying to concentrate it around a key activity centre away from main roads. We've got a huge amount of yellow on the opposite side of two major roads. We're well away from the uh, key activity centre, which is the uh, mm -hmm. Mall of Eastgate. What's the reasoning for such a large area to be intensified? So we'll let John speak to the map. OK, okay so... Um, with, with Linwood, you've got some um, existing uh, living two zoning nearby. Um, um, you have, uh, to the south of the mall, you have Linwood Park. Um, similar um, reasoning there as with Hornby. And you have, a, you have pedestrian routes across, which are, which are not road-based routes. Um, so there's some benefit there to, to the area to the south of Linwood Park. Um, the area to the um, north of the mall, um, is one of the more accessible areas to the mall, and I, I take your point. There are again um, very busy roads in that area, um, and and then obviously the areas that adjoin the mall are, are, are more obvious in terms of accessibility. Um, one of the um, the factors in the, in the Linwood area um, is the enhanced development mechanism, um, which is operative in the in the district plan, is is also applicable over this area, um, and it's it's. It's kind of a patchwork. It's it's not a, it's not a very consistent area. Um, for example, like you find it across Barrington, um, it's more patchwork around Linwood. So we've taken that into into consideration as well. It's that there may be is an opportunity for intensification to happen anyway through that process. Um, but one of the outcomes of that may be that some of the areas that are closest to the mall actually would do not qualify for the enhanced development mechanism and may be left outside of that intensification opportunity. So there's a, there's a risk there of consistency of, of, of urban form um, close to the mall compared with the land just a little bit beyond. Um, and that was one of the drivers for, um, for, for looking in this area quite, quite closely. 
but it, but it does go against the same principles you're applying in, um, in Hornby. This area here sort of goes, you, you argued the point about not replacing those areas, and, and in, this, in this particular map here, mm. it's almost the same type of area where you've got some main key routes. Uh, at the, at the yellow part on the, um, the, the, the north west side of, uh, of the mall is so far away from the key activity centre. I just, I just don't quite understand it. And when I look at the plot sizes on the, you can actually see the plot sizes are, are tiny. It's You're quite right to a degree. I mean, the ones to the south of Linwood Park, their obvious route is through Linwood Park, but they still have to cross a busy road to get across to the mall. You're quite right. Similarly, up north, um, uh, where you have to cross Buckley Road or, or come down Buckley Road and still cross into the mall. You, you're quite right. Um, My main difference to Hornby um, is... Um, in Hornby, there are a large number of cul-de-sacs. Um, mm. So in this area, the streets are very well connected in terms of their grid structure. And the other um, difference is that there isn't um, the industrial use that we have in Hornby. Mm. So this is mainly low-scale residential around a big-scale um, single almost um, activity centre and smaller shops, as opposed to the Hornby model where you have a number of lots of large-scale um, part industrial area, so there is some difference. Mm. Rental uh, makeup of this area. Do we know? Do we know? I, I'm not. I don't know the precise proportions of each of them. It, it is information that's available from the census data, though. Um, we I, can I, see if we can find that, and if it's. If you I like. just. I, I'm just looking at the very low levels of. Um, submissions in this area um, and wondering what's driving it uh, because that is a very major intensification. Um, the area that you've excluded, the one um, around Wellington Havelock, which has quite a particularly interesting character, um, what was the reason for taking that off given how big a chunk you're doing? The, the area that's been taken out, which is to the um, immediately to the west of the mall, that block there. Um, part, partly, there's there's an issue with access there. Um, uh, we we can't escape the fact that there are the mall is situated on an intersection of two busy roads. We can't escape that fact. But um, the access from that block is somewhat less than the others in that um, it requires um, two major roads to cross rather rather than one. Um, but but apart from that, there's also um, a level of development that's already happening in that area. It's current zoning is living too. Um, so there's already some development that's been happening as, uh, as we speak. Um, similarly, in some, some respects to what's happened in Maryvale. So on balance, it's, it's a less, less appropriate area than the other blocks that have been identified. And the impact of the, particularly the part to the on the city side um, of that, what 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 does that do when you put such a big piece of real estate into um, intensified development? What does that actually mean to a neighbourhood? Yeah. Um, speak to it. Uh, sorry, are, are you um, talking about the very west of the? Yes, so that's an existing L3 area. Yes, yes, that's existing. Anything that's to the west of the cross intersection is existing. Yes. This, this, is, an, this is an interesting area for a few reasons. Is because that land has been zoned for many years now and it's been quite slow to be redeveloped. This is an example where maybe the uh, areas identified for medium density in the past the market's not picking up and it's maybe not ready for the change. There is, well, we considered the fact that the market may be more open to medium density development around the commercial centre. Not only, I mean, it's required for us to have a look at it, but also the markets do tend to pick up closer to commercial centres, especially one as large as. My apologies, because I've misunderstood. So that big chunk on the left of the, uh, my computer's. Yeah. Left up there, um, is already 
Residential three yep, or L three. That, that's correct. It is. Yes. So the impact of making this yellow on this screen is actually negligible. So if I just Stop may it. indicate it with the, with the pointer. Um, sorry, you have to turn back. Uh, this area here, which I'm approximately outlining, is existing living three. So that will transition to residential medium density, but it's effectively no change. This area here, here, and here are the areas where the zoning will change either from living two or living one. Yes. Except that it's all called medium density in the proposed plan. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Now, um, yeah, in, in contrast to my comments on some of the other areas, this is one that I do have some concerns with, um, particularly looking at the area south of Linwood Park. Um, I mean, if we look at the Linwood area in general, it's an area which has had its challenges over the, the past few years and an area which has largely had a lot of its original character um, destroyed in some cases with um, some pretty ugly commercial development and certainly some not particularly good examples of um, L3 development in that big area of yellow towards the left of the page. Um, that area south of Linwood Park is one area where there is some character still left in the area. And if Linwood was ever to, for want of a better expression, gentrify, um, the arts and crafts bungalows and the workers' cottages and that sort of thing in that area would be ripe for that, particularly been right on the, um, the, the border of the park there. Um, if you take into account some of the logic which we were talking about earlier around the, the juxtaposition with the key activity centre, you've got to cross a reasonably sizable park to get there. The nature of the area is such that there would be some residents may rather not walk through the park, particularly at certain times of day. Um, I don't believe that the linkage is there to the mall in the way that it would be in, um, in some of the other yellow areas that you've got. So, um, you know, whether promoting this type of identification, um, intensification, and I identify that the, the land prices in this part of town probably would be lower than in some of the other areas that we were talking about, which in turn, which, which would lead possibly to a, a rental type of development rather than an ownership development, which in turn may lead to a poorer quality development rather than a higher quality development. There's enough there to give me some concern, particularly around that block south of Linwood Park. I'd, I actually don't believe this would lead to a positive recovery for, for this part of town. Yeah, l land price is, is quite a big part of my thinking in what outcomes might in fact be. Yeah, yeah, there's no, just uh, Phillipstown School, um, which is being closed. It's uh, Nursery Road, is that right? Yanni and Paul? Um, and this area is going to be, uh, is that right in the yellow? I'm just trying to find it. Yeah. Yes. So, high intensification, or higher intensification, the school's going. This is what led me to that question earlier on about intensification and lower socioeconomic areas, and I'm just. Oh, we should leave the school here. <laughs> oh, we can't be having a. We can't have logic taking over. Thank mm -hmm. you. 